What's up guys, Justin here with DCGessentials.com back with another Blender add-on video for you. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the new release of the Construction Lines add-on. It's specifically designed to help you do more accurate modeling with things like dimensions and specific lengths and other things like that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So you can download this add-on by visiting Dan Norris's Gumroad page, which I will link to in the notes down below. So you can download this add-on. This does have a cost associated with it, but it's seven dollars and for the tool set that this adds if you're used to using CAD style modeling inside of SketchUp I think you're gonna find that it's totally worth it but um, the other thing we want to do is we want to jump back into SketchUp and when you install it you just want to make sure that you enable the 3d view construction lines tool right here all right so to actually access the tools contained inside this add-on you click on the button right here for the construction lines which gets added when you enable the add-on but what that's going to do is that's going to add a little toolbar at the bottom of the page and so that's the first thing that's been updated it's just the interface of the tool it gives you really quick access to these different tools in here so notice how you have access to like your measurements and drawing lines and rectangles we'll talk about all that in a minute um, but that's how you're going to access these different tools. Um, in addition, there's also under the tool construction lines drop down um, a list of shortcuts for your keyboard shortcuts um, as well as some other things that you can adjust in here as well. And so you can adjust your length unit inside of this drop down right here. Note that if you go into your um, scene units or your scene properties and the units and changes to imperial then you can adjust this so that it's feet or inches or whatever you want in this little drop down right here all right so again remember this is designed to be a precision modeling tool so a lot of these improvements have been designed to kind of work along with that so the first thing that's been improved is the way that the uh, guide dimensions are shown so now if you come in here and you click and then move your mouse notice how there's guides being shown on the center point or there's a there's number shown on the center point showing your lengths well in addition Addition, now those are, are persistent meaning that if you click in here and you click on these different points it's going to keep these guide dimensions on here so you can use this in order to quickly add dimensions to your model so let's say you wanted to measure the distance between Bonnie's feet right here um, you can see I could click between this point and this point right here and so you can toggle that off using the display function over here on the right hand side of the page so if you don't want to show those you can toggle those off over here all right, so for those of you that have used CAD software, specifically SketchUp before, um, you know that the way that selections work is the direction that you drag the selection box is gonna affect what's selected. Um, that has been added to this tool. And so let's jump back into select mode. So right now, what's been added to this tool is the ability to um, change the way that your selections work depending on the direction that you drag a box. So for example, with the Blender Select tool, right here, if you drag a box across these objects right here, everything that this box touches is going to get selected, right? So that's pretty standard blender right there. But if you use the construction lines tool, the direction that you drag is going to affect the way things are selected. So right now, for example, if I drag a selection box from right or from left to right, um, only the things that are actually inside of the box are going to be selected. So notice how if I drag a box from here to here, only this cone right here is gonna get selected, right? Because that's the only thing that's inside of the box. If I drag a box from right to left, everything touching the box is going to be selected. So um, this is something that really allows you more fine control over the way things get selected inside of Blender. All right, so remember that what this tool does is it's basically adding those kind of more typical um, like CAD functions to Blender. And so like for example, one of the typical CAD functions that you might use is you might, um, instead of doing a G and moving things around um, like you do in typical Blender, what this does is it allows you to set a base point like this, and then you can move the object around, you can click again to place it. And what that does is that makes things really useful for like aligning and other things like that where you couldn't previously do that. So notice how now I can use the snap on these other objects in order to align this. This was contained inside of the original version, but what's been added is the ability to also do that inside of edit mode. So for example, let's say I was to click on this object and hit the, whoops, let's select this click on this object and hit the tab key. Well now, if I come in here and I select all of these edges like this and then click 
and then I use the move tool in order to click and move them. Notice how you can adjust this inside of the actual um, edit mode like you couldn't necessarily do before, I don't believe. So this has been an improvement in functionality that allows you to do more inside of edit mode as well as inside of object mode. So Dan's also added the ability to use um, duplication and distribution inside of this tool. So one of my favorite tools inside of SketchUp is the ability to create arrays of objects really quickly. And while you can do that with an array modifier inside of Blender, it's a little bit clunky for more like CAD applications. Well, what this tool allows you to do is it allows you to use the construction lines. Um, it allows you to use the construction lines move tool in order to create copies. So let's say I select this monkey right here, and then I click on it. I move, well notice how right now, if I move and I'm gonna tap the Y key in order to lock this to this axis, um, what this is going to do is this is going to um, basically allow me to move this object. However, if I tap the control key, what that's gonna do is that's gonna put this object into copy mode. And so when you go into copy mode, what that means is that means you can easily create a copy of an object, which again is one of my favorite things inside of other programs, specifically SketchUp. But what this allows you to do in, in addition is as long as you don't click anywhere else, you can type a number to increase the number of duplicates. So if I was to type in a value of four, and then hit the enter key, what that's gonna do is that's gonna create four copies instead of just one. And so that allows you to quickly come in here and create copies across lines. Um, another thing this allows you to do, and so let's say that I was to create a copy right here along the x-axis. All right, so in addition, if I was to take this object and move it like this, and then tap the control key to create a copy. And then if I was to type in divided by on my keyboard, and that's the forward slash and something like, I'll type in a value of four right here. And hit the enter key, what that's gonna do is that's gonna create four copies between these points, or four copies total um, between this point and this point right here. So you can use that in order to quickly add spaced items inside of Blender, which um, is something that I'm really excited about because I use a function like this a lot. And so in addition, you can also use this in edit mode now. So if I was to select this object, for example, and we were to select it, tab into edit mode, then select something like this face, right? So we'll select this face right here, and then we were to use the tool and move it. So we're gonna move this down, but we're gonna tap the control key like this. Well then, I could do the same thing. Well first off, notice that this split these faces. So you can use that in order to split the faces like this. You could also type in divided by in a number of copies, like five. And what that would do is that would create five copies in here and it's gonna split these faces up when it does that. So you can use that in order to quickly add detail to faces inside of Blender as well. Um, note that in this case, yeah, I did select the interior face, but you could just select the exterior edges and divide the face like this. But being able to do this in edit mode um, is really a great function and something that I'm super excited about playing around with a little bit more. And so one thing I struggled with a little bit when I was doing this was I was initially, um, because in other programs, you don't always use the numpad for navigation, right? Um, in Blender, you do. So you type in like zero to get to your camera. You can use like nine, seven, eight in order to like navigate around on your screen, right? But um, in actual or in other CAD programs, but in other programs, a lot of the time you use the numpad in order to enter values. So there is a preference in the preferences for construction lines where you can turn off numpad for navigation. So if you do find yourself just trying to add, um, if you do find yourself trying to add values using the numpad, um, you can turn that off um, in the preferences if you decide that you wanna do that. So in addition, there are a number of other um, preferences that you can now adjust. So things like your toolbar icon spacing, um, the number of uh, segments in a circle or an arc, as well as things like the size of the guide points that are in here and your keyboard shortcuts. So if you're used to using SketchUp, right, the, the move tool is gonna be the M key. You could just come in here and you could just select the M key instead in order to use that for the move tool. So you can customize your keyboard shortcuts in here as well. And so one thing I do wanna make sure that I highlight with this tool, um, it's not really a new feature, though there have been some improvements um, of the feature, is um, this does add a line tool to Blender, which it's very odd to me that Blender doesn't really have a line tool. I mean, you can definitely like add um, a surface and then delete all the surfaces except for a pair of uh, 
and pair of vertices and an edge, or you can enable extra shapes and extrude a vertex. But like an actual line tool seems like something that you would want inside of Blender. So what this does is this allows you to just type in values. So if I type in five, for example, it's gonna draw, draw a five foot line. You can lock this in here. So you can type in a value of three foot. It's gonna do that. So you can actually draw lines. And remember that this does also close in shapes with faces. So you can draw lines between edges in order to split faces, which is something that you do see in more um, like CAD style programs, specifically SketchUp. Um, I think there's a way to do it in AutoCAD, but I'm not really an AutoCAD guy. But being able to come in here and just split these faces is a very valuable tool, and uh, it's really easy to use inside of this tool set. So on this page, I'll link to where you can go get this add-on. If you like it, please go check it out and support the developer so you can keep doing work like this. I'm adding these precision tools to Blender. I'll also link to the uh, Blender artist post about this. So if you have any questions or anything, you can leave those there as well. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.